Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to reply to a question by a viewer. And this question is a very generic as well as a very important one. And the question is, what is the number of papers which you need in your PhD to get a good postdoc or faculty position? Now, of course, as you will realize, this is a very subjective topic. There is no universal answer. So let us apply some scientific thinking to it and see what we can do about it. Now, before I begin this discussion, I would like to add the caveat that the answers here, of course, depend on the field you are in. If you are in material science, the number of papers are going to be much larger. If you are in mathematics or in sociology or literature, the number of papers expected are much less. And in some fields, books may be expected. So let's talk about mostly the scientific or social science or even the humanities type of disciplines and let's make some general rules about that. So I would say that at a bare minimum one journal publication is a good idea to have for a PhD because this essentially cements the fact that your PhD has led to something which is quantifiable, which is verified by the international community at large. And again, I would recommend to most people that they try to publish this paper in an international journal, not necessarily in a national journal. So that will make it a point that their work has got international coverage, as well as publish this paper as far as possible in an English language journal, because sometimes I see papers published in Japanese language journals or Chinese language journals. And unfortunately, the reach of such journals is very less. So it's not a good idea to publish in local language journals. Now, let's look at what more you can do. Now, of course, you would think that more is better. So I would certainly say two papers is better than one. Three papers is better than two. Four papers is better than three. And five is a point where I think you are reaching a good value as far as a PhD is concerned and a number which is almost like a maximum value at this point. So five journal papers in a PhD is something which would get you in many situations, including in the foundation postdocs such as Humboldt, Fulbright or Banting, JSPS, etc. Now, of course, in some fields, more papers may be required. If it's material science, you may have to double this number to something like 10 would be required. Chemistry, it may be even more. Many people may have 15 papers in chemistry. In mathematics, people may have two papers and so on. So again, one to five is a good number. I would say three to five is probably a good number such that your resume is in some shortlist as far as postdoc positions is concerned. Now, in many cases, of course, the field you are in, the subfield you are in is going to be very important because as far as most faculty positions are concerned, they really look for the exact match between what skills you have and what are the skills they are looking for. So there, of course, the match may be more important than just the number of publications. Now, what happens if you have too many papers? Like if you have over 10 papers, your resume is going to be scrutinized more carefully by members of the selection committee who start to question when people have too many papers because what happens is that they themselves may not have had many papers in their PhD and they are somewhat suspicious of people who write too many papers. Now, why are they suspicious? Let us look at some of the issues. There has been an inflation in paper numbers over the last many years. What has happened is there are not only more research topics, but there are also a large number of journals. So people essentially scrutinize the journals very carefully to see what is the type of journal, whether it's a good journal, whether it's a not so good journal, whether it's a bad journal, whether it's a predatory journal and so on. So one of the things to keep in mind is that always try to publish papers which are indexed in Scopus or Web of Science journals, preferably in Web of Science because Scopus itself is somewhat unstable. Sometimes journals get delisted from Scopus. And so what happens is that you may have published several papers in a Scopus index journal and find that the journal itself has been removed from the Scopus database. So keep that in mind. Generally, Web of Science journals are better. Society journals which are in Web of Science are considered to be some of the best journals. 
So now what are the possible problems if you have let us say three plus journal papers. Now what people look at is if there are too many writers of the papers. So essentially if you have papers written by six people, seven people, ten people then aspersions may be cast on one person and how much one person has contributed to this work. So especially if you are a PhD student and your papers are with a large number of people that's one red flag which people will look at. Now the next thing is if you are too late in the author list. So essentially let's say there are seven people who have written the paper and you are number six. Now this does not come out well because what happens is that most people think the number one person has done most of the work and then the remaining people have done some additional work beyond that and the last person probably has just corrected the paper for grammar and for minor issues. So this is often the case in many labs and universities. So make sure that you do not get thrown too late in the author's list if your advisor is trying to do that. Try to negotiate with him or her that you need to be in front of the list if you have done more of the work. Now the third issue is salami slicing and salami slicing is essentially the strategy or the tactic that you publish your paper in least publishable units. So essentially you publish very small papers, three to five pages and essentially you take a work which could have been written in one paper or two papers and you write five, six papers out of that. Now sometime what happens is you may see a sequence of papers and the author has first started with a quadratic polynomial then he has extended it to a cubic polynomial then to a quintic polynomial and so on. And so in these cases again the selection committee is not happy so again if you have very large numbers and you have done salami slicing that will be seen by the committee. Now the next point which is negative is if the advisor is in front of the author list. So unfortunately some countries such as Japan they often do that and so it may be expected if you are doing your PhD in Japan that your supervisor's name comes first. But in most uh, other countries it has become standard practice to put the PhD student's name as the first author because they are the ones who do most of the work. The advisor may have come up with some concepts but the student essentially does most of the work and so it is the right of the student to get, give his name in front of the paper. So that's again something to keep in mind. Now the other negative issue could be that there are too many very similar papers. So essentially this also happens that people have done very incremental work. So they have done a work and they have done a slight change or modification over the previous work and published another paper and so on and all these papers have been published in different journals. So these are some of the negative points about having large number of papers that remember that number itself is a very subjective issue. So like I mentioned one paper is good up to five is certainly very good number. So I would say five is a kind of optimal number as far as journal papers are concerned. But again, keep in mind that people are going to look at these various aspects I mentioned. So if you have not done any of these aspects, then certainly five paper would be a very good sum to have for your PhD and that would probably get you a postdoc as well as a faculty position in most universities. So. That's the point I had for you today. The optimal number is probably between three to five and I would say five is the optimal number for your PhD as far as journal papers are concerned. So I will end this video now and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.